Oh, hello. Welcome to the Ravenwood Asylum for the Criminally Insane. No, I'm not a patient. I'm the doctor. These are the files of the damned. The stories of those poor, depraved souls who found life to be a fantasy and nightmares to be reality. Example. This one is a woman who found that putting her head into the oven could do more than make a cake fall. These are the kind of tales that drove Edgar Allan Poe to the brink of madness. Poe once wrote, is all that we see or seem but a dream within a dream? I wonder. Do you wonder? Here, let me uh, tell you something about one of my more interesting patients. Oh, God, not that. Oh, no. It's too ugly. I'd better go easy on you at first. I don't want to scare you off. I want you to sit back and observe.
information supplied to our radio news center, the recent gang-related homicides in Aurora Hills is now being compared to homicides in downtown. You may recall homeless victims were found brutally murdered in 10 very bizarre incidents less than six months ago. Police both in Denver and Aurora Hills won't comment on the new evidence. That's news for now. I'm Patricia Harper. Alan Parker is next with Jazz Flight 109. Patricia Harper, please. Her husband. This is Bloodhound. What happened to the announcement? It was rejected. You think we take pranks seriously? Are most Europeans perceived as pranks? I don't make the rules. Your station became a legitimate accomplice to murder last night. Listen, you. How do you know I don't have a bomb planted somewhere in Denver, Miss Harper? Or some other insidious terrorist plot? If the authorities in Denver think these murders are gang-related for one second, they've got another thing coming. I was driving along, and then I heard these two shots, and with all this gang news going on, you know, I, I, this guy just ran into my car. Which way he come from? I don't know. Which way he go? I think he went between those two houses down there. Okay, stick around, little brother, in case we gotta get back with you. Come on, Tony. I didn't get a good look at him, but my dog did. You can see what it did to him. Well, I heard you shooting. Did you hit him? I don't think so. Man, he took off like a pole vaulter. Edward, you don't understand. You don't understand, Edward. Edward! Sorry the bubble's been busted on vacation plans, Logan. I got no choice. Neither do I now. Broke up with your girl, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't have had a good time anyway. Look, I was hoping to meet someone just the same. Look, I'm sorry about Hawaii. Let's not add any more shit to the pile than we got already. Is that affirmative? Affirmative. You two are going downtown. It's that important? Yes, Peps, it's that important. What's up? The homeless victims case. What's that got to do with us? You don't listen to the news, Spence? Read the papers? No, I try not to. <laughs> There's a connection now between those murders and ours. Matching evidence? You betcha. And they've been quiet about it? Well, they've been quiet about it. Until some jackass blabbed to one of the radio stations in exchange for a bit of free advertising. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A bit of free what? You know, some announcement he wanted broadcast live. It never came off. Except for what no one else was supposed to know about. The impression was made... That it was nothing more than usual murders in spite of everything else, right? Right. Yeah, right. I meant what I said yesterday. The lid's been cracked. Then it's over, Hilda. You can't make them believe, just as you couldn't from the start. And I should forget about it now. That's going to clear me. Heinz wants to help now. Ah, who convinced him? He took charge all on his own. Why didn't he speak up for me when he had the chance? He's been by several times. He knows 
since I've heard from you. He wants you to know you can come home. No hassles, no blame. <laughs> because he knows I can't do otherwise without getting nailed. Host! He never got over how you left him for me, Hilda. He still can't accept the fact that it's over between you two. Or is it? Listen! I can't come back until these Yanks learn the truth. I didn't cop the dime bag from him. Where, Tanner? Come on! I don't drop names and locations. But you're willing to drop and cover for gang-banging pals, Joe. Why do you rough and ready's ain't ready to take the rap when you red and blues are brought in here? All I did was drop by the loan him some money. And that was all you did, right? That's right. Yeah, right. You and God knows how many others were there to knock his ass off, Joe. Bullshit! If you didn't do anything, how'd you get caught by undercover officers? All I did was drop by to loan him some money. When I was going back to my ride, I heard a noise. Some man was beating up on Spongy. One of your fellow gangbangers. A man who came out of nowhere. He just kept beating on him. And that's all he was doing? That's all he was doing. And you didn't participate not once, huh? That's right. I didn't know what was going down. All I could think of was getting the fuck out of there. And smacked into an unmarked car and got busted. That's right. And you didn't get this knot on the onion from beating up on Spongy, right? That's right. Yeah, right. Just won't admit he and a few gangbangers killed the guy with a sledgehammer, huh? Ah, he won't admit anything. He's lying up his ass. What have we got we can hold the guy by his balls? Not what we have on him so far. He's out on bail until a court date can be set for possession of pot. Unless something turns up that might tie him into this whole thing. A Hail Mary lead, huh? We just found out that the FBI and a few LA Task crash members are coming here. Is that right? The latest victim is a gangland godfather they've been trying to nab for a while. A gang what? If it's who they think it is, he and another suspect still at large were featured on that nationwide crime watch program. These guys have laundered millions of dollars in legitimate businesses. Real estate, stage shows, you name it. They have evidence the latest victim made final arrangements to open a car dealership here in Aurora. They're coming here not only to verify the body, but to identify a gang base right in our own backyard. So these assholes are trying to change our class environment into a gangland, huh? Except there's friction between rival parties. The problem is, what we have as evidence points to something other than gang-related incidents. Yeah, like what? <laughs> Patricia Harper, how may I help you? How's it going? Why? I'm sorry about the last call. What is it now? Hardcore facts about the Aurora Hills case. If you Do me. yourself a favor, Bloodhound. Get some psychiatric help. You'll make the announcement by the time we're through. Meet where? Let's get one thing straight. Don't pull anything. It's not clear how your wife drowned in the shallow part of the pool, Mr. Thurman. The autopsy may show she suffered a seizure. Oh, my God. But it's not known yet if pregnancy was a contributing factor. We'll know more after lab results. Lisa. end up if I didn't do what you're trying to get me to do. I'm glad I didn't have you bumped off like I started to do. Who gave you the authority or right to dictate to me? You shit and wipe your funky ass like everybody else. So who the fuck are you? Someone who cares enough to step in when parents won't. Say, look, motherfucker, my parents care about me. You got that? I got homeboys whose parents don't give a fuck about them, but mine care about me. Is that right? Then why are you smearing shit on their name? Generations of black people's blood was spilled for a fair shake in this country. And not so you can go out and spill blood of the same for no apparent reason or purpose. Fuck you, motherfucker. Suppose you and other jive asses got people pissed off enough to become vigilantes. Storm the streets and wipe out all you motherfuckers. And you'll be one of them, motherfucker? And you'll be one of them, huh? Was it necessary, necessary Edward? I mean, I mean, did you, did you have, have to, to go down to his level of communication? communication? So they've been used to. So 
only way they grabs their media attention is all they've been used to. In their hearts and minds, kind words and hearts have no place in the mentality of wolves. It seems that way. That's what it is. This confirms what I thought all along. What are you trying to say, Eleanor? It was a mistake to allow you to work in such a stressful environment. I mean, you just lost your wife and an unborn child. How could you possibly work? Look, they got to understand what they're doing is wrong. How long will we as citizens wait around until someone does something about it? The government's not moving fast enough, so it's up to us now. Start from the beginning, Officer Drayton. Take your time. His name is Edward Thurman. I've always called him Eddie. He's a former probation officer who was wounded in a drive-by about a year ago. Now, he was counseling an ex-gang member who knew of plans to establish a base here in Aurora Hills. Now, the first time I met Eddie was in Vietnam in 1970. He was in Special Forces, and I was stationed at the same base. You know, that Vietnam buddy thing. Eddie was really something, man. He got a medal, and I lost two fingers. <laughs> but anyway, all I can say is, is we were really tight friends. And when we both got out of the service, we went into law enforcement in Denver. And we've remained close friends ever since. But I haven't seen him for a while. I don't know what happened. We got together for lunch a while back and for drinks once or twice after that. Oh, wait a minute. What am I saying? I saw him about three weeks ago. And he came by totally unexpected. Hey, man. Eddie. What's up? What's wrong? I need water. OK. Okay, relax. I okay. Need a sip of the drink. Okay. All sip right. I'll get. Drink. Okay, I'll get you a beer. Gentlemen, here's your drinks. Thank you very much. I don't know what came over me. A voice. Something forcing me. Something inside. This damn voice. Have you seen a doctor? One for nuts? No, Eddie, not that at all. You said on the way over here, you were having reactions from... I had my blood analyzed by a friend of a friend. I was referred to an AIDS research clinic. I'm sick as a dog and still can't find a damn thing wrong. When I was wounded, they told me the blood was safe. It wasn't contaminated. Yeah, sure, look at me, Tony. I can't even see straight. They told me on a few visits after my initial release, it might have something to do with temperature change. I'm fine in the day, but at night, man, I'm sick as a dog. Maybe it has something to do with how you know what's been said about the moon. How it affects the tide and oceans, water in the human body. Something's tearing me up, man, and I'd be damned if I know what. Oh, you know I feel like killing. The sicker I feel, the more I feel like killing. Eddie, I, I don't know what to say. You don't know. Kelly doesn't know. Nobody knows. Man, I've got an awful feeling that he's got something to do with these gang killings. Before we left, I went to the bathroom. When I came back, he was gone. I haven't seen or heard from him since. 
Well, who is Kelly? I don't know. That's the first time I've ever heard the name. Kelly. Kelly, if you're there, please listen to me. I'm sorry. Sorry I didn't give you a chance to explain what I don't understand. I tried, Kelly. Tried real hard to meet you when I said I would. But the change came. I didn't know it would. The gun surprised me, Kelly. I felt betrayed. Then angered. That's when I came to the house. I really want to hear what you have to say, Kelly. If you're there listening, let's talk now. Better still, I can come there before dark in case you know. Even then, we can talk. You can explain. Kelly, you of all know, even in my state of something bestial, I, I still have some form of human reasoning. Kelly, please, talk to me, Kelly. See me, Kelly. Spence, a young woman's on the line. She's got information on a possible suspect in the gang killings. You and Logan, get on it. My reacquaintance of him was during an altar call at church. At the last minute, he backed out, went back to his seat. At the end of service, I went over to him. He was very surprised to see me. We haven't seen each other since my former days as a gang member. We got together occasionally. For some odd reason, he wasn't the same man. It didn't take long to learn about recent tragedies in his life. I was very sorry to hear about the life of the loss of his wife and unborn child especially when he was wounded in a drive-by shooting while trying to help a gang member go straight, like he did with me. He found it ironic after becoming a probation officer, believing he could reach those in gangs to seek other choices, became a compulsion to be judge, jury, and executioner. That statement convinces me it's not unlikely he could be a part of the recent gang killings in Aurora. I didn't see him again until one night last week. He came to see me one night. He desperately needed my help. Some people may come looking for me. You must tell them you haven't seen me. They could be doctors from the clinic. Maybe even the police. last appointment to a research project at a clinic on the brink of finding a cure for the AIDS virus is what was so important to tell me about. He supplied blood for their screening process. He was about to sign in when he overheard a doctor speaking to the city coroner. They sounded like Carl's friends to him. The doctor was inquiring about a weird blood sample the coroner sent him for a second opinion. Whatever was strange, he found the exact same thing in the blood of a volunteer donor. I knew he was talking about me. It had to be. Help me as I have helped you. Help give me new life as I have given Since I've changed from a life of gang activity to one of decency, one ability I never knew I had, lying dormant, has finally surfaced. 
the capacity of keen perception. I haven't seen nor heard from him since. Somebody's playing games with our ass. That woman I spoke with on the phone? Yeah. I had her story checked out. No one in the Department of Corrections ever heard of this, Paula Rice. What do you mean no one ever heard of Paula Rice? You're sure she made arrangements to meet the guy? Look, we were discussing whether or not to call you guys first, or wait until we hear what he had to say. I promised her I wouldn't say a word until she got back. She might not be worried about herself, but hey, I didn't want to take any chances. She meets him after her news broadcast? That's right. Well, after they've been together for a while, as not to draw any suspicion from him, we'll converge and nab this bloodhound. So what the hell is she saying? This guy could be a possible suspect because he felt like killing a few asses? Evidently, what she felt was hard for her to do might be of use to us. How many times have we said the same thing about this gang shit, Logan? She thought it might shed a bit of light on the case. On what? She may be burned out from dealing with Denver gangs before she transferred to this district, but I don't see how she feels an ex-screw could have inflicted that kind of punishment on these dead asses we got here. Then maybe she's fantasizing. About what? A subconscious desire for somebody to initiate what she doesn't have the guts to do. Well, if that's the case, why pick some burdened soul who sounds like he's about ready to kill himself? I don't know what else to make out of it. I'll tell you about fantasizing. I'm fed up with this gang shit. I've got this recurring dream, see? Where I shove this ten-foot spear up some gang banger's ass till the tip sticks straight up out of the bastard's mouth. Like a skewed pig. Now read my lips good on this one. I use a long, strong spear, see? Not a puny one with a dull tip. How long? How long will this last? How long will I last? How much longer will the world last? I understand a lot of states in the U.S. have a gang problem. The huge demand for this thing called uh, clack, sold for higher profits, brought up to these various places, including your city of Denver. Your government claims they cannot stop the flow of drugs into this country. The reality is, Miss Harper, they don't want to. So it's going to spread and continue and we'll get horribly worse. I understand this drug is killing and causing killings of th countless thousands, many of whom have nothing to do with it. Innocent people caught in the crossfire. Is it true it's become an urgent topic in the nation's capital, Miss Harper? You tell me. You seem to know quite a bit about our internal problems. America is not the only nation on the face of the planet with internal problems. But America seems to be the only one willing to bear them more than others. I guess you'll tell me next that it's because we have more freedom than others. You abuse your freedoms more than, more than others, but that's beside the point. I agree. I suggest we get to the real issue at hand. The gangs seem to be trying to establish a base in Aurora Hills. I can see how that falls within reason since some of them were found murdered there. But what's underneath all of this has nothing to do with this so-called customary rivalry. Are you truly convinced a foreigner like you has what the American public really needs to know? I know they didn't hear that announcement for one thing. Information they needed for the protection of their lives. But you made damn sure they knew about the connection between two murders on opposite sides of town that made no sense to them whatsoever. That's half-assed journalism if you ask me. Where the hell do you get off questioning our code of ethics? Just who the hell are you? If you have the American public's interest at heart, why hide behind some penny any name like Bloodhound? I have my reason. Yeah, it's because you're a nut, okay? There was a man found shot to death in a Skid Row complex last week. The authorities still had him listed as a John Doe, correct? What about him? 
I know all about him, Miss News Lady. And I'll tell you something else. I know his real name because I'm the one who killed him. You what? All right, I'll spell it out for you. Someone got a hold of some bad blood. Everything that happened can be blamed on the man that I killed. That announcement wasn't simply to inform the public, but clinics and hospitals to report anything strange among their patients, anyone acting wild. The possibility that someone else could be contaminated is as real as a snake bite on the ass. Are we on yet? Are we on? We are. Okay. Good. This is Lucas Morris of KAIP News live on the scene in Aurora at a large abandoned office warehouse building where police are in the process of apprehending a possible suspect linked to the recent gang slayings in this district. stay with him as long as we can. Well, for God's sake, you and your crew be careful. You just wounded a police officer. There's no telling what he'll do next. It appears the suspect is attempting to make an escape to an upper level somewhere. Lucas, are you there? We're experiencing more communication breakup. We've got gunshots. It appears a police officer has the suspect cornered. We're trying to get around to get a better view. It appears now from this angle that there's some kind of struggle going on between an officer and the suspect. Wait! Oh my god, it appears the suspect just decapitated the officer. My god, what? Definitely the officers are murdering everyone out of the building. Get your crew out of there. common logic, what would explain this guy not being too sick or weak to produce this kind of shit? That's where Maria comes in. Okay, first of all, that supposed gangbanger you had in custody and your female officer aren't lying about what they told you. About a possible suspect, that is. Neither is the other girl, Kia Powers, whom I spoke with on the phone. Now this Kelly girl, who no one's ever seen or met before, is the key to it all. She knows more about what's going on here than what you'll ever get from anyone else coming forth with additional information. She's in the area close by, and so is this possible suspect. They've been here all along. Now this only covers what's going on here in Aurora Hills. Now this bloodhound character, who I understand got away, knows just a bit more, and it all ties in with John Doe at the morgue. That situation spilled over to you guys here, but it's all part of the same line. You see, answering questions to that situation 
answers questions to this one here. So what are you saying, man? I was raised in, raised in a Christian environment, and it gave me insight into what a lot of people find too hard to believe. The only possible answer left to this humongous question. Something of unknown origin? Something of pre-known origin. Man, what do you think of this, Spence? This thing is getting weirder and weirder. Yeah, well, Maria gave us this tape to listen to. Maybe we'll have more answers, huh? Okay. Well, pop it in, Spence. Since you two are the key investigators in this case, you might as well accept what's really going down here. Your boss will never buy it. He's too set on believing it's all a gang thing. But for one time, in which may be the only case in history, they're innocent. Wrong place at the wrong time. These young yahoos aren't smart enough to think of this kind of killing. We better get her down to the station and find out what the hell's going on. The guy who got him did it intentionally, viciously, and horribly. He either knew they were gang members or they just happened to look like him. If the latter holds true, you're going to have more bodies not necessarily tied into any particular gang. Now they almost nabbed his bloodhound character not far from here, and he didn't just happen to be in the area. The news girl confirmed at one point during their conversation that he drove by the scene of the last murder. Now I'm sure you know what he left behind while making a fast getaway. Uh, this duffel bag containing a passport, 22 Luger automatic, and these strange looking bullets, which ballistics is looking over now. Yeah, and this map. We also know his name's not really Bloodhound, but some German name. Horst Steinfeld, a senior member of the International Police Agency known as Interpol. You are bosses looking into one of that now. Now here on the map, he's marked every spot where you found bodies. They're all in one specific area of Aurora Hills. Now it's not by coincidence that people are phoning the station talking about a lot of weird things tying into this situation. When, pe when files were pulled of past reports of mangled dogs, cats, and a few broken in garages, you learned they were filed long before the murders of these yahoos began. Now here's what's important. Those reports contain names and addresses of residents living right in the vicinity of this station. My efforts to reveal the truth have been deeply hampered, but the situation in your city remains all too real. By the time your authorities of Denver receive this, I will be far from reach. If you have not learned what the radio news lady and I discussed, I will not take this time to bring you up to date. But I will explain what you are dealing with and how to destroy the killer. You are faced with a demon that is transmitted by blood, a 500-year-old spirit of retribution. Whoever is infected will seek vengeance from whomever is responsible for personal injustice. The demon metamorphosizes in relation to the progressive cycle of the moon. He has a degree of sickness on the quarter moon. The illness is elevated by the half moon. It is unbearable by the third quarter moon. By the time of the full moon, the shape changer, the demon, assumes full form and then executes its vengeance in a horrible, brutal way. Now I must make this perfectly clear. You cannot destroy the demon, but you can stop the individual indwelled with it. First take this into consideration. Individuals infected with this demon do not know who they are. They have been deceived to believe that some other element is responsible for their severe state of illness. They possess regenerative powers. If they are wounded in places that would otherwise prove fatal, the wounds will heal. Even, as, even in human form, if they are fatally wounded, they will continue to function although that does not mean that they do not feel pain. You have a weapon in, and special ammunition in your possession that I possessed. It will completely destroy the heart of the individual infected with this demon. Next to blood, it's the secondary sustaining life force. The demon can only function in a living physical body or it cannot operate. To substantiate how the weapon was put to use, examine the evidence on the body of John Doe lying in your morgue. Evidence of someone living in those broken-in garages was found by those who reported it. Recent blood samples were found near a mangled dog in a resident's backyard. 
Now, the man living there didn't miss plugging the suspect when he fired at him like he thought he did. It wasn't the dog's blood the lab found to be contaminated. The last victim was found near a garage. Now, here's the clincher. Just before you two came back after meeting with your boss, I over overheard another report that was being filed. A family moving into their new home discovered something in the garage when they were storing away a few things. Someone's been living there like Goldilocks without the three bears. That happens to be the garage next to the one where the last victim was found, gentlemen. If I were you, I'd drive by there and have a look inside that garage. Damn, I could be stretched out on a Hawaiian beach by now, digging on some babe's fine ass, instead of hanging around here dealing with his weird shit. <laughs> Wishful thinking, pal. What do you think of this, Maria? Is she setting us up for some sucker punch or what? I don't know, Logan. Digby should be the one smelling this shit. Christ, what in the hell is that smell in here? Well, Spence, if it wasn't so goddamn dark in here, we'd probably know. Watch the door behind you, Spence. So much for the element of surprise. Wait, wait, I think I've got it. What? The light switch. Well, turn it on. God, who the hell died in here? Jesus Christ! Incredible. As sick as he is, he's got sense enough to try and keep clean. What the hell is that? If you don't think he will turn there, where do you think he'll go? It's not his fault. Whenever the change came, it forced him to kill, so he butchered dogs and cats. If he can't control it, then help us find him so we can help him, Miss Adams. Please. Do you have a cure? That's what he's been searching for. That's what he wants. If you want to help him, find a cure. If not, then give him peace. I am sure you have gathered from the pers few personal belongings left behind when I escaped your attempt to apprehend me that I represent Interpol. I am also convinced that you have con made contact with my superiors to learn more information about me. But I doubt that what they have told you is the same as what I am about to reveal. My chief assignment was to apprehend a murder suspect wanted in connection to a series of murders involving Nazi fugitives assuming false identities residing in various sections of the world. The man in your morgue is Saul Reitman, a member of an underground movement waging a personal vendetta against Nazi commandants responsible for the slaughter of countless Jews at Auschwitz. When I encountered Reitman in Berlin, once he became a key suspect in the murder of one Nazi fugitive seeking asylum, I did not know, I did not know what had infected him. Once he found the victim in Poland, whatever happened, began there. A colleague of his was apprehended in Berlin shortly after the victim was murdered. A Polish Jew dis who described the horror that I was soon to face and the method of destroying the carrier of the demon itself. He revealed Reitman knew of another Nazi fugitive supposedly living under a false name here in the United States. I learned he was to board a plane. I was told where to find him. My associate came with me. We saw Reitman change from human to demon form. I did not use the method described to me because at that time I simply did not believe. I did try to kill him though. I am now wanted for attempted murder by my own organization because of it. My associate would not reveal the truth during a formal hearing. When I learned of the scheduled hearing, I became incognito. During this time I discovered Reitman's point of destination. His intended victim lives somewhere here in Denver. I have not been able to locate him, nor do I know if Reitman was, su was successful in doing the same. 
but I do know Reitman had reason to believe his targeted victim may have been posing as a street person, a homeless soul. If my hunch is correct, I believe you will find the victims in your Skid Row case had German names. The preceding scenario was only to lay the groundwork for something more frightening. I learned that Reitman sold his blood. To pay for room and board, he did the same in Europe. It contains the demon of retribution. Judging from what is occurring in the community of Aurora Hills, you have another Reitman. Not one who is avenging the murders of Jews at Auschwitz, but someone avenging personal, a personal encounter with the gangs. Cheryl, the blood analyst, the one who told us about the research program at the clinic. What about the call? They found a cure, Edward. They found a cure. Why was she calling here? No one had. No one has this number. Well, you know, I still check my machine for messages at the house. She called and left the information there. I tried to return the phone call, but she wasn't in. And so I just left this number because I had to know the truth. But she didn't know where I was calling from, and she didn't even ask. They found a cure. to help arrange for you to get down there. I have to go meet her. They found a cure. They found a cure. Now, now will you stay here while I go down? You promise not to leave? Are you uh, sure? I'm sure.
Hey, sugar, what you got in the bag? Hey, hey, what's in that bag? Hey, sugar, what you got in that bag? Come on, babe, show me. What you got in that bag? Come on, babe. virus seem like the common cold. It's important that he'd be placed under close medical scrutiny. How this disease is further transmitted must be known, whether it's transmitted through saliva, an open wound, or abrasion. Now if we can get enough tranquilizers in him, it might relax the muscles. looking for you. Are you hurt? Oh, 
don't know who realized it first, but we can't hide anymore. It was all confirmed tonight. When they found me, I knew one of you told. Either you, Kia, or Mora. Maybe all three of you. Yes, Kelly. When you left me for a while, a few took your place. Edward? I feel the next stage is total loss of reality. No more lucid moments, even in bestial form. No more awareness of knowing you're living like a bad man, but washing and shaving just the same. That you've killed animals, people you were pissed off about, when you know you look like something during Halloween. No more wondering why you're messed up, trying to find out what messed you up. No more flashbacks showing why you're pissed off and what you would like to do about it. I can't even explain how I keep living or why. I've been injured in places a normal person would die instantly or eventually from. What I see next is the blackest blackness one can even imagine. I don't know if it means death or what, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt would be a long period of darkness, and then I'll find I'm elsewhere, not here, not with you, but somewhere. important job for you. Yeah, what kind of animal got loose this time? Well, I didn't say it was an animal. It's police business. What the hell is that supposed to mean? she skipped out on us? Wouldn't surprise me if she's clear over to Vegas by now. But while you were meeting with Digby, I got a lock on Thurman. He called here. He wants to turn himself in. We'll go get him. He'll only surrender to me. Give me the taser gun. No way, lady. It's the only way now, Logan. 
I want her wired. Hello, Edward. Why? Why what, Edward? Why did you bring them to me? Why did you help them find me? Because it has to stop. There seemed to be a way to find the answer through Kelly. And she is gone. Yes. She has left me again. Then what is left, Edward? It's not just animals anymore, it's people now. It's not to control what's forcing this change on you. What you voluntarily choose to do is out of control. The same compulsion that once snared you. And look how it left me. My life could have been another gang statistic, but I was lucky. I'm crippled but alive. So am I. Remember when you came to me one night? In your own words, you asked me to help you as you had once helped me. I am returning the favor, Edward. I'm here to assure you no one means you any harm. But Kelly... No one could blame her for what she did. You have no right to express anger over what she was compelled to do. You speak of one under human subjection. But what about one who is cursed with something bestial? You still have some form of human reasoning. Only some form. Edward? Get up here quick. We go for donuts. You go around that way. What about her? She has the taser gun. What else does she need? A grenade launcher? Spence, go around that way. Yeah, I know, I know.
I knew him all along, <laughs> long before any of this happened to him. And I bet it was you who placed that bogus phone call, pretending to be a colleague who worked with him. Yeah. Why? I guess I wanted to know if it was him all along. In all actuality, you're just a damn good actress, and not really a psychic, right? You tell me. I suppose now you're going to tell us you were romantically involved with no. this guy. <laughs> I was wounded in a drive-by shooting as well. I used to be a gang member, and he was my probation officer. It's a crazy life. A hazy life. Mixed up jumbo. probation officer who received a blood transfusion after he was wounded in a drive-by shooting. While well, rumors have it, he was transformed into some kind of uh, bestial killer because of it. Well, the good thing is he's in custody, but now there are reports of a rape victim who received a blood transfusion due to injuries sustained in that rape, and evidently she is going through the same type of transformation. You know, we've had problems with our blood supply before with, uh, with AIDS and, and the contamination thereof, but now is there something additionally wrong with our blood supply? Is our blood supply safe? Give me a call, Tom Jensen at 555-KAIP. Tell me, is our blood supply really safe? Again, that number, 555 These, the stories of the insane, the infirm, and the hopelessly mad, are merely the records of the twisted brain, and I've shared them with you. Perhaps you've learned something from this, perhaps not. As I close this file, let me give you a fair bit of warning. Be careful, you, those of you who think it could not happen. Be careful that someday soon, you and you alone are not committed to a lifetime of screaming madness in my asylum of horrors. Mm-hmm. <laughs>